Good day everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, powered by Joseph Global Consulting, a lecture presented by Ethel Desmond Roland on detection of oil spill migration pattern using remote sensing and GIS, BSc Geology, MSc Exploration Geophysics, and PhD in view. Table of content, introduction, material methods, finding, outcome, and conclusion. What we say, what is an oil spill? An oil spill is the release of a liquid petroleum hydrocarbon into the environment, especially the marine ecosystem, due to human activities and is a form of pollution. Now, we all know that oil spill is a major problem in Niger Delta, which has caused our environment into a place that crop could not grow, the aquatic life are all destroyed, and it has led to food crisis and lack of job in our environment. The material method used, uh, we used uh, the, the SRUTM data gotten from NASAT, that is short radar topographic mission, NASAT 8 2020, gotten from NASAT, oil spill sample location slash pipeline, gotten from NOSRA, location of towns, gotten from Google X. And the essence where we got this information is that oil spill are occurring in this area in the Niger Delta, precisely within Bayelsa State and River State. And in 2019, they've experienced so many oil spill in that area. And due to the cloud cover nature in the Niger Delta, we've been able to get image, but we all know the effect of oil spill on vegetation and aquatic life. So, this data was gotten from January 2020, which is last at 8, January 2020, so that we could check the effect and monitor the environment. And in this case, we are not talking about the monitoring, we are talking about the migration pattern of this spill. So the method using spatial analysis method in hydrology tools, with the help of raster calculator, so that we can actually check on the terrain analysis of the area using ArcGIS 10.6, to extract the drainage pattern in order to detect the oil spill migration and also process the image analysis for vegetation indices. And what we call vegetation indices, what are we talking about? We are talking about the NBVI, Normalized uh, Differential Vegetation Index, the Soil Adjustable Vegetation Index, which we mentioned other ones. And also talking about the green near infrared and the green short wavelength. Now, this is a summary of the finding that we did, I and my team did particularly me, to find to check on the vegetation index, which is the vegetation stress on the environment. You can see the pipeline. You can see the pipeline very well. This area, the black spot are the spills spill. Now we all know the that when you have unhealthy vegetation. You expect to see your NDVI to be close to one, close to plus one, and and on the healthy vegetation below. Now, if you look, the environment has been distorted. Checking only using NDVI, you can see how what we are talking, we are talking about 0 0.454016, which means that the environment has been destroyed. The environment has been destroyed, generally the environment. So, but we are not talking about the effect. We are talking about this oil spill migration. When a, a spill occurs in this spot, how does it move? This is NDVI. This is near, this green infrared. We have SAVI, Soil Adjustable Vegetation Index. We have the Atmospheric Resistant Vegetation Index 2. We have the green short wave infrared 2. We have all these things. Now, these aspects, we have talked about these lectures on the effect of oil spill on vegetation 
indices. And we are just using this one as a summary of what we did previous lecture to see how we could detect the OSP migration pattern. Now, from the SRUTM data, we were able to generate the elevation, digital elevation model of the place so that we could understand the terrain in that area. Is the area where this pipeline passed, are they low land or they are uh, high land? Or I should use the altitude, are they high or low? I should, or I should say that the, the low spot and the high spot. So we can identify where this pipeline passed so that we can delineate the migration pattern with the help of our drillage pattern. So with the help of the topographic mission, we are able to delineate the migration pattern of the hydrocarbon when the spill occurs, how does it move? And apart from that, what type of soil do we are we expecting to see in that place? Because when the spill occurs, we expect that if the place is made up of sandy soil and it's in dry season, the spill will end penetrate immediately into the ground. But if it is clay, because of the behavior of clay, clay has the ability to actually kept it as suspense. So it means that it will take longer time for the speed to be at the surface on clay than on sand, which is very important. And we can see that the area with white on this image are generally lowland, and it means that those areas are area prone to flood in general when we want to talk about floods. Because a flood also has role to play with spill, because the spill occurs during flood season. We should expect more communities in short on the area to be affected because of the water. Because the vegetation will actually uh, carry off this uh, this this uh, thing, uh, the the oil spill downwards from what we are seeing. Area that is already flooded, which are the from from one of my uh, paper that I did on flooding, I observed that particularly in Niger Delta. Uh, between that uh, down to 14 like that we should be able to express some areas we have flooding I think uh, 4 meters 4 meters to maybe 12 meters above sea level we should be able to see that the areas are flooded because of 2012 flood that has been able to tell us what was the maximum flood we find out in the Niger Delta we find out that it's uh, close to 14 meters height above sea level that came up in 2012. So with that too, we should be able to know that look, if this if the, that kind of flood occur in this terrain when this spill occur, we should expect that the spill will spread in various communities based on the drillage pattern of the environment. This is five spill terrain profile of the area trying to analyze how general the terrain is in the entire area where this pipeline passed. And you can see very well that from the legend, the elevation, you can see 4.3, that's very low area. And you can see that 11.4, uh, like that 18.4, 25.5. Like I said, we found out that during 2012 flood, the maximum flood information we got from 2000 flood that it's the maximum flood of 2012 flood came up to about 14 meters above sea level. It means that the water was so big. So, and we all know that in 2019 we, we saw floods. And from, previous, from my publication and research, I found out that 2012 flood came up, up to 11.4 meters which is actually big and we expect community to be affected in that area. So this is OSP migration pattern. So when we say OSP migration pattern, what do we mean? We are not talking about how drillage system, how is the drillage system in that area. I should be able to talk about the flow direction. Conclusion. From short radar topographic mission SRLTM data, the results reveal that oil speed migration patterns flow from north to south. And if the flood occurs, a lot of communities, especially the riverine community, will be affected due to the terrain. So it is important for you to also consider the migration pattern when carrying out assessment.
on oil spill. Not just assessment on oil spill, when they want to start drill, drilling, you should be able to know the direction of which when the spill occurs is going to affect the communities. And also, if when floods occur, which area or the likely area that will be affected should be able to eliminate that. Thank you. My name remains Desmond, and I'm grateful for having you guys today to give you these lectures. Thank you.